a potential Corvette E-Ray was spotted testing somewhere outside of Detroit. What's up, YouTube? Welcome to Fred's Full Throttle. Each week, I'm going to take you with me on my adventures in the world of cars. Let's get right into it. Since last week's video went live, there's actually been quite a few developments that I found in the world of the C8Z06, so I thought I would go over those with you. All right, so my first point is a little bit somber. On Saturday, December 11th, a pretty big storm front rolled through Kentucky, and several tornadoes were spawned out. It caused widespread damage. There was some significant loss of life and really kind of uprooted a bunch of the communities around Bowling Green, Kentucky. My heart goes out to everybody who is affected and it's genuinely just a really, really sad situation. While not at all important in the big picture, but certainly something worth mentioning in the world of Corvette, the Corvette factory was indeed damaged. Uh, last week, which was the week of the 13th, they shut down all production. The Corvette Museum was also shut down. As Chevy evaluated the damage, figured out what they need to do to move forward. And at this point, it's unclear if they're going to resume production on the week of the 20th or not. Obviously, this stuff doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, but I figured it was worth mentioning. Also, Chevy has reached out. There were about 115 cars that were damaged and damaged to the point beyond repair, where they're basically a total write-off. Chevy's reached out to the dealer network, and obviously the dealers are getting in touch with the people who own those cars. I've heard that Chevy's going to pause all upcoming builds and prioritize these 115 cars first so that the future owners of these cars won't have to wait any longer than they already have. But obviously, just a, a horrible situation. So my heart goes out to everybody affected. Hopefully things can go back to some semblance of normal in the near future, but obviously just a sad story all around. All right, so transitioning a little bit onto somewhat of a more happy subject, the pricing for the C8Z06 is starting to become a little bit more clear. So product marketing manager Harlan Charles was recently on the Corvette Today podcast and gave some pretty interesting perspective on what the pricing of the C8Z06 will look like. I'm going to paraphrase a little bit here, but basically he said if you looked at prior generations of the Corvette and the difference in price between a Stingray and a Z06, he said that the pricing will effectively be right in line with what you would expect, that the pricing is not going to be drastically different than what people are used to. So I ran some math and I did a little bit of looking, and I'll put the numbers up on the screen, but basically it boils down to that during the C7 generation of car, the difference between the Stingray and the Z06 as far as base price fluctuated a little bit. It was higher early on and then lower later in the production run, but it started with about a $27,000 difference in price early on. And then by the end of the production run in 2019, it was about a $24,000 difference. So a C8 Stingray base price starts at 62,195. And if you take those numbers, it basically puts you at 86,200 up to about 89,200. Factor in some inflation and we're getting pretty close to having like an 89,995s, just under that $90,000 mark. That's probably about where the price is going to fall. There's a lot of speculation here and there about are they going to try to get under 90000 for bragging rights? Are they going to be somewhere up to about 95000 But I would say within $5,000, that's where the base price is going to be. Certainly adding options is going to bump those prices up, but any of those prices, this is going to be a remarkable car. So nothing's been officially announced, but Harlan did also say that the pricing was going to come out very soon. So I'd say probably look for that sometime in Q1. And one of the other great parts about that is that the pricing of the car is also going to come out with all the different options and it will fill out that build sheet so that when that happens, people will actually be able to see what does that come out to when they spec out all the different options for the car. Right now, the car visualizer online is a great tool, but it doesn't doesn't give you any sense of what that's going to cost. So some of those options like specking the carbon interior package or the carbon fiber wheels or Z07, I think a lot of people are just playing around with what looks good. And then when it comes to actually seeing what those numbers cost, they may back off a little bit on some of their builds. So that'll be really interesting for sure. All right. So in what I consider to be one of the most interesting bits of news from the last week or so is that a potential Corvette E-Ray was spotted testing somewhere outside of Detroit. A photographer was driving along and saw what looked like basically an uncamoed kind of hodgepodge Z06 test car. But they noticed a couple of things which stood out and lended themselves to this not actually being a Z06 and instead being the long rumored E-Ray. Now for those unfamiliar, the E-Ray is the long rumored but never confirmed hybrid version of the Corvette. Supposedly it's gonna use the 6.2 liter LT2 traditional cross-plane V8 from the Stingray, as well as have a hybrid powertrain. The speculation is that that middle tunnel, the aluminum tunnel in the middle of the C8 has enough room for not just additional wiring, but also batteries. And then there would be an electrified front axle, which would provide front wheel drive as well as the rear drive from the gas engine. 
This would end up being the first hybrid Corvette ever made, and it would also be the first all-wheel drive Corvette ever made. Now the reason that this car stood out specifically, and if you look at the pictures, is first, it's got the wide body of the Z06, it's got that wishbone along the side for the side air intakes, but if you look a little bit closer, it's missing the rear spoiler, though it does have the post for having that, one on each side. On top of that, if you look at the rear bumper, the top is all Z06, but looking a little closer, the bottom actually has the side kind of corner exit exhaust. It doesn't have the center exhaust that the Z06 has. So some would certainly dismiss this look as being one of the older Z06 prototypes. There's actually a pretty well-known Z06 prototype that had the corner exhaust. It was seen driving around. It was one of the full camo cars. Now one could easily dismiss this and say, hey, it's a Z06. It's got the Z07 package wheels. It's got the wide body work. But the photographer said that they were able to follow the car for about five miles. They had their windows down. They were able to get a good opportunity to listen to the car. And they said that it actually sounded like the traditional cross-plane V8 with the LT2 for the regular C8 Stingray. So that's pretty interesting. Why would there be a Z06 that has the traditional motor in it. Now the other thing you might be asking is why is this car not camoed? Why, why are they having an essentially undisguised car driving around? Chevy may be relying on the idea of hiding in plain sight that since the Z06 is announced and the bodywork looks close enough, anybody who isn't really following the car may not even pick up on the sound of the engine or they may not pick up on there not being a center exhaust. Given that Chevy put so much effort into that center exhaust, especially this late in the testing phase, when the car is pretty close to being ready for production, it seems like this is probably something else. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that the E-Ray is confirmed, and I'm certainly not going to be one of those knee-jerk reaction YouTubers who's saying everything's confirmed, but it does give you pause a little bit to think about, is this one of the things that's next for the car? I would imagine that it probably is, though the specifics are probably not going to be known for at least another half year or so. But I would say sometime maybe next fall we might be hearing a little bit more about this car. Certainly if I hear more information, and especially any official confirmations, then I'll be able to share those as well. As we go through this video, we're getting into more and more interesting news. The next one I think is really, really important. You may recall that back when the C8 Z06 was announced and Chevy talked about how important the tolerances were of the motor, right in their announcement video, Taz even talked about how tight those tolerances are on building this new LT6 motor. Now, if you go through any of the online forums or Facebook groups, and I don't recommend you do, it's full of a lot of garbage and a lot of speculation, and there's very little backing it up. The general negativity on there seems to center largely around the lack of builders. There were articles and people stating that there were about 10 or 12 of these master engine builders, maybe as many as 20, but a lot of people seem to be ignoring the fact that Chevy can train up more of them. Now what's interesting about that is I actually stumbled upon an article from a place called Watchanista, which I guess is for high-end watch enthusiasts. I'm not one of those people, but I found the article interesting and they actually got a tour of the C8 Z06 assembly line and got to see kind of the behind the scenes of the engine building process. Now what's interesting about that is this article came out at the end of October and it actually states specifically that there were 30 engine builders at the time of the article. Now you could easily say as a lot of people have been trying to do, well it could have been taken out of context or maybe they misstated the number. However, this was a pretty detailed article. They had a lot of pictures of the assembly line that I had not seen anywhere else. They had interviews with people who work on the production line, including one of the engine builders themselves. And so I think that it's a pretty accurate source from them to hear directly from Chevy when they were doing the research for the article, how many engine builders there were. Now that puts us at 30 engine builders. I don't know if that's all dedicated to C8Z06. I don't know if they're also working on other projects, which certainly could be the case. Now, one of the things that's really interesting is a lot of people seem to think that it is impossible for Chevy to actually train more engine builders. They've got several months now until May, and I guarantee you they're going to be training more. So 30 is probably the starting point. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's the final number that they're going to have. Now, I think this is really good news because it means that fairly early on, Chevy has already gotten more engine builders than maybe what was initially announced. Keep in mind that the release video and the unveiling, that was filmed months prior. That wasn't filmed like two weeks before the car came out. They had to go through their whole editing process. They had to go and figure out what they could and couldn't say to the public at that point in time. So the fact that this watch article came out 
right near the start of November, which was which was give or take a couple days away from the actual release of the unveiling video, this tells you that Chevy is already ramping up that training. And with another five months or so until the car actually hits production, I would guarantee you they're training up more people. I don't think the engines are going to be a limiting factor on this car. Maybe other resources, but not the engines. I've also heard just incidentally that the chip shortage is starting to ease. If you look at some of Chevy's other production lines, production is actually at capacity and they're even running some overtime hours to build now that they've got more semiconductors coming into all the cars. So I think that's really good news. All right, so I'm going to do a quick bonus and that's following up from my video last week. You may recall that at the end of last week's video, I had a little bit of footage of an Arctic White Z06 as well as an Elkhart Lake Blue Metallic Z06 sitting on a car carrier headed somewhere. And at the time I said, hey, these are uncovered, they're headed somewhere, we're probably gonna get pictures of those soon. And it seems like that may have already happened. Now, a quick caveat, I can't tell from the video, and maybe one of you can comment, but I can't tell if the white C8 Z06 on the car carrier is a hardtop convertible or not. However, a white hardtop convertible with the Z07 package was spotted recently on a street and somebody took some pictures of it. So I'm gonna show those here, as well as a car carrier was seen headed to the Milford Proving Grounds. And that car carrier had a C8 Z06 in orange, another one in hypersonic gray, and the last one was in silver. And those were actually in daylight, so the color comes through pretty good and it gives you a better sense of the cars. So now we're starting to see these cars a little bit more out in public, and I think that that's pretty awesome. We're starting to get a better sense of what they look like in daylight, as well as how they look kind of in real world settings. So that's pretty exciting. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving me a like or a subscribe. That really helps me out. I'm a small YouTuber. I just do this for fun. I don't get paid for it. But anyways, thanks again for watching. And until next time, Fred out.